It was 2013 and I was returning to Perth after filming our Savannah Way project. I'd left Julia Creek and was heading toward Cloncurry to refuel before turning around and heading back towards Winton. But first, we would pass through McKinlay and Kainuna, which was the area where the legendary swagman supposedly lost his life as immortalised in Banjo Patterson's Waltzing Matilda. Did he really exist? Or was it folklore? I decided to visit the Billabong to find out. The question remains. Enjoy. Sunday morning, it's either the 5th or the 6th of October, I'm losing track of time. And, uh, I was critical, or I made a comment of the road and how bumpy it was between Cape Crawford and Barclay. Let me tell you, this one's not much better. Oh, it's a bit better. It bounces like crazy, though. Know? How would you believe we're on the road just before 8 o'clock? It's a warm day yesterday, so it'll be a hot one again today. I figured we'll like getting things moving while it's still coolish. It's 39 in the van when I stopped last night. Quite a while to get that down. And I went to sleep, but I just left the generator running and I thought it'll run out when it's ready. It didn't take long, it'd been almost six or seven hours at that point in time driving the air conditioner, cooked the tea for me and started to do a little bit of charging of the batteries as well. 12 volt fan kept running all night, then I opened the windows at about five o'clock this morning. Every now and again you come across a channel system and uh, that means that uh, when it rains all this generally gets pretty flooded because well, there's water on the streets. Apparently going through such a channel system. And we just passed into the Concurry Shire. Looks as though he might have gone to sleep and run off the road. He's whacked that tree. Turned around and came back. <laughs> Don't look. Not there. Plenty of blood, so obviously someone's picked him up. We stop and go back and check, hoping desperately you won't find anybody in the car. Wondering what on earth you're going to do if, if there is. Fortunately, there is a phone signal out here. something like about 20 kilometres from Cloncurry and my turn off is probably about 10 kilometres on the road. <clears throat> the country's changed. I'm actually going to go into Cloncurry and feel um, Twenty-eight kilometre turn around, but it's better to be safe than sorry. The country's definitely changed with our all of a sudden into those <coughs> roughly type areas, hills, mining country. Now turn off to Winton that's coming up. Yeah, they continue on into the Montgomery Hill up. That's the Landsborough Highway down there, currently on the Flinders Highway. What ain't called Curry? country is very different now, it's uh, definitely mining country. A 
want to mind if we have to get around to find carry on chairs. Back at the turn off, Lansborough Highway. We're turning and heading towards Winton. Three hundred and thirty four to Winton, five thirteen to Long Beach. The Q line is our first objective. We're only twenty five kilometres out of on Curry and already the country has changed. Them. Now thirty kilometres out of town. We're back with most of the grasslands. We're coming into McKinley. And McKinley, that's where certain scenes from the movie Crocodile Dundee were filmed. That hotel, here the walkabout hotel, was the hotel that the scenes were filmed in. I heard this morning the hotel actually was transported from the Northern Territory down to here. I don't know how true that is. But I'm interested to have a look.
This is the Walkabout Hotel as used in Crocodile Dundee. According to the write-up here, the Walkabout Creek Hotel was originally known as the Federal Hotel. The pub was built in 1900 and licensed in 1901. The Walkabout Creek Hotel, that is now famous for being recognised as the pub in the Paul Hogan movie Crocodile Dundee. The pub, together with other buildings in the town, were featured in this iconic Australian film. The thing is, there's a plaque on the wall which says that the Walkabout Creek Hotel was opened by the then Commissioner of Police in 1996. So, is that what it was renamed, or was it in fact relocated from the Northern Territory? I need to uh, do a bit of research on that. Kainuna, I think, is the name of the next town we're heading for. to the right, and Winton, straight on. Kainuna, 75. Past a kangaroo a short time ago, standing under a small tree, well, more than probably 50 metres from the road. This size road, standing there, sheltering from the, the heat, I guess, from the sun. And I reckon it's now warming up to the point where the snakes and things will be coming out. Well, we haven't seen a snake on this trip at all. We've done 14,000 kilometres. It's rather amazing. I've seen a few goannas here and there. But really haven't seen that sort of wildlife that we anticipated we probably would. Well, the temperatures where they are at the moment, you would think that they would be coming out, but uh, still haven't seen them. We're just under 50 kilometres from Kainuta. Quite a bit of road work happening out in Western Queensland at the moment. Could you lead us through this stuff here, but it still don't look like it's wet enough to me. It's shining up. Or is it, you know, it's, it's not looking wet yet. Uh, it's coming, it's colour, but it's, yeah, no, it's like, and, uh, it's not as wet as I reckon it should be. More than we can see much, but it's just a cheap piece to dry down a bit. Yeah, well, We're just 10k from Kainuna. And uh, having a look around, it's all dead flat except the foot loads. I suppose they call them jump ups over here. These uh, flat type hills. <coughs> Little range of them here. One to the right there is Mount Edkin, I believe. There's another one a bit further around called Mount Grant. There's another one on the right hand side, this white hill. Kailuna established in 1988. Population of about 20 people here. Who wants to say that? Marina Roadhouse.
see if I'm the line. This is the Blue Hill Hotel. Apparently it's the last connection that's basically being had through here. Banjo Patterson's Jolly Swagman. is the Kainuna Hotel. It used to be one of three hotels in town. Now the Blue Hiller Hotel is the only hotel in Kainuna and is the only remaining building to have any association with the great Australian folk song, Waltz and Matilda. It's said that the Swagman and Squatter had their last drinks at the hotel. Banjo Patterson also apparently drank at the hotel. Saving chair for the surf life saving club out of here. Alright, Nuna is situated on the Diamantina River. Certainly, it's the heap of their channels that runs past the town. Right, the left cuts back to Julia Creek. Probably the road we would have come down had we decided to come direct to here. We're approaching the Combo Billabong Conversation Conservation Park, or the Combo Waterhole Conservation Park. And this is supposedly the waterhole Billabong that uh, Swagman died in. See Matilda. Maybe we can get in and out. It's eight kilometres in. You only come in here in dry weather. Just looking at the road, you can tell why. This would be very boggy ground. This is the division of the Winton and McKinley Shires. And it's two miles to the Combo Waterhole, which was the original Cobbard Co mail change. And it's also the scene of Waltzing Matilda uh, of Banjo Patterson. Then we straight ahead with the stock route. you can drive along, but which we're not going to. Meanwhile, on the combo waterhole. Two miles, three and a half kilometres.
the walk is just over a kilometre long, about 1.3 kilometres. And this is the can. Down here is the billabong. A few kangaroos drinking here. We just bounded out of the place. But there it is. Pretty dry at the moment. Very dry, in fact. If we don't get the rain, the summer will dry up completely, I'd suggest. We're currently in the middle of the Diamond Tuna River system. This looks pretty flat, but when she overflows, this will be all on the water. And these trees are the cool bar trees. Pretty ugly looking things, but I live out here, that's the main thing. Well, that's a 2.6 kilometer return walk, and yeah, there's history there, and I suppose to complete what I'm doing, I needed to do it. But in this temperature, October, no, I certainly wouldn't do it again. The temperature's sort of buzzing somewhere around 40. It's 10 to 3 in the afternoon, so it's the hottest part of the day. Really, when it's all boiled down, I wish I'd stayed closer to this billabong. If you enjoyed this video, there are over 400 more just like it on this channel. Subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll let you know when our next video is available. If you like this video, hit the like button and maybe even leave a comment. If you weren't too impressed, then the dislike button tells us absolutely nothing. So tell us why, so that we can do something about it. Thanks for watching.